Hello everyone, I am Artsy, and well, just by looking at the title of this video, we are going to be creating a Five Nights at Freddy's OC! Speed paints or speed art videos is something that I've wanted to do on my channel for the longest time. I've made some in the past, but I ended up deleting those videos for copyright reasons and the fact I didn't really like how they turned out. I think I still have one more left uploaded, but it didn't do that well, so yeah. So anyway, like I said before, today we will be creating a Five Nights at Freddy's OC. I've been a bit of a fan of it, the series, since it came out. I never personally played the games myself since I'm literally a giant chicken. So I would just watch other YouTubers like Markiplier or Fusion Z Gamer. And one of the things that mostly drew me into the FNAF verse was the fan art. The safe ones at least, not the... But y you know what I'm talking about, right? The art that people made of this game was amazing to me, and being the art enthusiast that I was, I wanted to get in on the fun. So let's begin. So what kind of FNAF RC are we going to be creating today? Well, I've actually had this idea in the back of my mind for a while now. Security Breach is the latest game to come out of the FNAF series, and although the gameplay itself is much to be decided, the, the designs for all of the characters are all unique in their own way. You have the failure father figure who irresponsibly lets a child run around a giant mall unattended while being chased by killer animatronics, the lolly girl that literally eats garbage, anger issues who constantly throws tantrums like a baby and may or may not have had the hand in the disappearance of a clearly homosexual bear's bunny boyfriend, and the sexy wolf that everyone and their grandmother is simping over even though she's about as interesting as a wet carrot. Let's not forget that one character who was supposed to show up more frequently but didn't because of a bug in the game, the real nightmare fuel and my sleep paralysis demon. And finally, we have the daycare attendant, or attendants, Sunrise and Moondrop, or Sun and Moon. The obvious, best, and the only good and interesting characters in this game. Seriously, the daycare level is one of the scariest levels in this game. You need to turn on all the generators for being chased by a creepy moon dude who for some reason has this really sexy voice. Simp. And it's still hard to believe that this creepy fellow is actually this adorable sweetheart who just wants to finger plate and play with glitter glue and he's so adorable and handsome I want to give him a goddamn hug. Simp. But enough of me simping, going back to the daycare attendant, I imagine that it must be pretty difficult having to take care of a bunch of children when you're the only robot available. So I figured, why not make them a friend? Another daycare attendant to help around the daycare. Let's get into it. Now let's get started making our new daycare attendant. I also want to start off by saying that this part is unscripted compared to some of my other videos, so if I jumble or mess up my words, that's probably why. I'm going to be starting off with Sun's daytime buddy first, because for reasons. Now if we are going to keep the celestial theme with the daycare attendant or the day and night theme, I thought, what's something that people normally see in the daytime? The only thing that come to my head was a cloud, so that's what we're going to think this character as. I still can't believe I had to actually look up references on how to draw a cloud, because god forbid I know how to draw a cloud. As, uh, so I had to look up references as to how to draw the daycare attendant's slim skinny body. Or like their- or as people on Tumblr and Twitter like to say, their uh, scrunkly body, slim and scrawny. If you think I'm lying, go check it out. It's it's kind of funny. If it hadn't actually been weird enough, I, peop, I don't, it literally started this past Sunday. People on Tumblr literally for some reason in the sudden mood fandom just started to make a trend called, I hope I'm saying this right, Ass Sun Sunday where they're literally drawing sun with a giant dumpy butt. Is it creepy? Yes, but for some reason I find it oddly hilarious. If you think I'm lying, go check out Tumblr. If you have it. Sorry, I literally have no idea what to say here. As I said, this is pre-recorded. And I'm currently like watching the recording go by as I'm recording this. I am currently sketching the body and I decided to give a little cloud girl here some like little clouds around her neck. As well as later you will probably see I put them also around her wrists. I figured to give, you know, be a little different from sun. Because you know how like sun and moon have uh, like little ribbons around their uh, the neck and the wrists as well as I th their torso and I th think the ankles. 
I decided to be like a little different here to try to like make her look more fluffy because since she is a cloud we want her to look or at least I personally want her to look a little fluffy and as you can see here I am having a very hard time drawing hands drawing hands is biggest weakness am I right artists I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste the arm because you know I'm lazy and I don't feel like having to draw the other hand because that's a literal nightmare and then up next, I'm going to draw her skirt, and just like her frillies on her neck and her wrists, I tried to make the skirt as fluffy as possible, or at least tried to like give it like that cloud, little poofy, fluffy look. Sit, and then here are her pants. Uh. I don't really know of anything to say, they're just pants. I, mean, I tried to at least at first to uh, give her the frilly, like the little frills on the bottom of her legs, like the dare gear tendon, but for some reason it just didn't look right, especially on her, so I ended up later going back and just adding like more white floofs. I also decided to go and add a bow to her head, because the more I looked at her, the more she or at least her head at least looks too plain and bald. <laughs> she looks like Moon, so I decided to add like a little bow to her head. And I honestly was really proud of that decision. I think it makes her look more cute and more daycare attendant like. She looks friendly like Sun. And next up is the outline and the coloring. If you're wondering why I'm outlining in this really bright, ugly, purplish pink, it's mainly because later on, or at least in one of my current styles, I like to do like a clipping mask on the outline layer and I basically, I color over it with whatever, like a darker shade to like whatever color I'm using on that area. Kind of like My Little, po uh, My Little Pony Friendship It's Magic, that kind of style. Like it's purple and they're out, like Twilight's fur is purple and then the outline of her is like a darker purple. Kind of like that. And also with this color, it makes it easier for me to see, especially from drawing characters that have like darker colors on them, like black or like a dark blue, it makes it easier. Also, I just want to say that a lot of the sketching and the coloring and the shading, I ended up just cutting it out because I felt like it, if I left it in there, it would have made the video too long. I didn't want and I didn't want to bore any of you to death, so I ended up scrapping a lot of it. But I wanted to, or at least I tried to keep as much as I could as possible to like show at least some of the process that I did while making it. So now we are getting into the coloring part. And if you're curious as to why I made a purple background, it's because while I was picking out my colors, I realized I was working with white and just so I could easily indicate like what areas I wanted to color in white. Just to make sure that I managed to color it in thoroughly, I decided to color the background a different color so I could, I could see what I was doing. I also decided to add polka dots on her legs. I just think it would have been, like an extra nice touch to her design. Cause you know like how Sun has stripes on his pants and Moon has stars on his pants and his hat. I thought that was like a really good extra touch. And now finally we are on to the shading. One of the shading techniques that I've recently found out or I decided to try that I actually really like is you shade you base you color in the areas you want to shade as in this light purple color and then you put it on a multiply layer and then you can like you know adjust the colors to like how you want it to the shade that you want it with the adjusters up in like the little bar thing on the top I can't think of the name of it right now and then sometimes if I or at least I want to try to make, give it a little bit more detail add another multiply layer on top of that with like a little bit of a darker shade of purple to try to give it a little bit more shade. Like I know this probably isn't one of the best ways to draw, but I'm, I'm not the best artist, nor do I claim to be an artist. So obviously it, I'm not perfect, but no one's really perfect. I also like to finish, sometimes like finish it off with like a little like highlight on it, like either from like the overlay layer or like luminous I, I, can, I can never pronounce it, the Lumi uh, setting on the layer. I, 
it's probably like the lazy way out but you know what like I said I, I'm not perfect that's just like the easy way for me to make it look good it's how I think it makes it look good and that's just me you don't have to agree and like like the last clip the shading I cut down as well because it would have just taken too long and I didn't want to bore you all to death but just from what I'm showing you, you probably could get, a, get kind of an idea on what I did to like spruce it up. Okay, now that I that, that's done, the moment of truth has arrived. Here she is. Here is our new daytime daycare attendant. This is Cloudy Sky, or just Cloud for short. Should take yeah, and yes, I am aware that I u I used the font from MS Paint, but my handwriting's bad. I didn't have any other way to like. Make it, the text look nice, so, so sue me. And so as you can see, she takes care of the children along with Sun in the Superstar Daycare. Her bow is equipped with a projector that can shine lights of different colors and objects around the daycare. So, so, she, can, so she can like put on like light shows and like show different pictures of animals, children, and other things. And she, the buttons on her chest are also equipped with a speaker and a volume button so she can play music and dance with the children. As you know, exercise. Gotta get the kids moving and shape up. Also another way to make them tired for nap time. And speaking of nap time... And now we're moving on to our nighttime attendant. So Moon's little helper. So basically, she, our little nighttime attendant is going to be kind of like Moon. She is going to be the opposite of the daytime one. So like how Moon is the opposite of Sun, like he's a bit, I guess, a bit more crazy and like not as nice as Sun. Uh, our nighttime attendant OC is gonna be just obviously just gonna be just like Cloud, like maybe maybe a little less happy and more a little bit calm and reserved. I guess you want to say. Actually. And had I actually did have a couple ideas for her. First off, sh her design is obviously going to be a star, since it's going to be since you know it's nighttime. And you know, the past couple of days while I was like scrolling through the internet, I actually saw like a lot of other people had the same kind of idea as I did, making uh, cloud and star themed daycare attendants, which is fine. You can do you. You just gotta make sure you don't steal other people's work, right? Okay, so back to what I was saying. Shit, I did, literally just forgot what I was saying. Shoot. Um. Oh yeah, I had a couple ideas for her regarding like her personality. Like obviously, since she has to be the opposite of Cloud. So, Cloud, I figured would be like kind of like obviously she's gonna be like Sun. She's gonna be the happier one. But maybe instead of necessarily like if she wasn't. Considering, if we consider that if she wasn't possessed by the virus of the Afton virus, probably like Moon was, she like more calm, reserved. She could be cruel. I literally have no idea what I'm saying anymore because I lost my train of thought. But if she wasn't possessed by the virus, she would have been like the smart. She, I mean, even if she, she wasn't, she's still like she's kind of like the smarter one. She's calmer. She's more reserved, and then with the Afton virus, she's at, she can be like a bit more sadistic and cruel, kind of like Moon was. Because I was just thinking, if she was like a lot more calmer and nicer and sweeter, like before the Afton virus, if that were the case, I just imagine Moon. Because I'm assuming Moon was it was possessed by the Afton virus because he's he clearly, well, just judging by him in the game is like a homicidal maniac who tries to kill Gregory. Either that or he's just very strict with the rules and he wants to put Gregory down for a nap. Like an eternal nap or something. If I w if Moon really was possessed by the Afton virus, what would he have, what was he like before? Like I a lot of people I see like especially on Tumblr actually I see like different concepts for what Moon would have was like before the virus. And a lot of them I actually think are really cute. Like a little soft moon, like he's actually like, he's actually calm, friendly, he's nice, he's shy. And I actually think that's really cute, like a little sh like a shy moon drop. It sounds so sweet and adorable. Okay, so. 
And like, and like before the virus, you know how his eyes like glow red? Like a lot of people think that his eyes maybe were like maybe blue. Like a dark blue. Maybe uh, our little nighttime attendant maybe before the like the virus took over, she had, maybe she had like purple eyes or something. Since spoiler alert, later on in the video, she's go her clothes are going to be purple, which is weird. I would even choose that color because, uh, fun fact about me, I cannot stand the color purple. I hate it. It is my least favorite color. But if I'm gonna be honest, there wasn't really much other colors that I would have cho chosen for, like nighttime theme. So I had to go with purple. And I'm sorry that the sketch, or at least for this portion, uh, looks worse than when I did Cloud. It was nighttime when I was recording it and I was tired and I wanted to get it done. But th though off camera I did you know, touch up a few things and fixed a few things on the sketch, like the eyes and the arms and the head. So now we're going into the outline part once again. I'm outlining with this ugly light pinkish purple. Also, as you can see off camera, I went and fixed up the eyes as well as the head. I ended up having to pull up Cloud's little reference sheet and literally had to trace over the eyes or like, like trace over the eyes but make them obviously like a different shape because, you know, Cloud, she's not going to have like the big bub- like, uh, you know, happy eyes like, uh, Cloud, she's going to be like more serious so she's- not as happy, I guess. As well as I also ended up tracing the arms because their arms literally look like long sticks. I they didn't look like they didn't look good, so I had to go and fix them. Also, a lot of these portions I did end up cutting out short again because you know time. In this section, with uh, I'm just gonna call her Star, is actually a lot shorter. Then the first one for time reasons as well so that's the reason so I'm sorry also while making her design I also just like you know how cloud has like a little poofy clouds that like round her neck and her skirt is like a little cloud and her wrists and her ankles just like cloud for star I did the same thing, but added little stars there instead of clouds you know, for her star theme. Which also made me wonder, like how- obviously with Sun and Moon you can tell like they're the same animatronic. Like it's the same face play and like the same model. So how could a cloud become a star? The only idea that I could possibly think of when coming up with this design is maybe Possibly, maybe, instead of like, probably like the hard plastic or whatever material that Sun and Moon's faceplates are made out of, maybe Cloud and Star's faceplates can be made of some type of like, weird, some type of weird, like, stretchy material, like silico silicone or something, I don't know. Like, some just some type of random weird stretchy material that allows, like, the stars and- well, like the face plates and the neck and the skirt and the wrists and the ankles to like morph from clouds to stars when the when the lights turn on and off. I don't know. This thinking random stuff. And now we are on to the coloring slash shading part. And if you're hearing barking in the background, that's Abigail. Don't know what she's barking at, and I honestly couldn't care less right now. So, like I said before, I ended up going with purple for her outfit as well as yellow. Uh, still can't believe I'm using purple. I hate using that color. My hatred for that color is actually a really funny story that I'll share another time. Yeah, the coloring and the shading I ended up just cutting out too. A lot of it just cutting out too for the same time reasons. Oh yeah, and as well as off camera, I, I think off camera, I ended up adding like little moons to uh, Star's pants. Cause you know, I mean, Cloud has polka dots, Sun has stripes, Moon has stars, and I think I think it would be fitting if she had moons for her pants. You know, 
Since both nighttime attendants can have each other's shapes on each other's pants, that sounds really creepy and I apologize, but... You know, you know what I mean? Don't take that inappropriately. And now, finally, we're getting to the shading portion. And this part, I ended up, like I said before, I cut it up short as well. I also got off camera, ended up making the white part of her eye black, because, you know, uh, Moon, the, the white part of the eye for him, Moon, is black. So, this here, you're gonna see how I shade in the eyes. I normally do, like, a. I do. They're mostly just, uh,. Overlay layers. Uh, I use black to shade the top part. I'll use like a, I'll put an overlay thing over that and use like white to like give it like a little highlight at the bottom And then I'll do like another overlay layer and do like an even bigger highlight. I Just think it that's just how I make it look nice because you know because you know how some anime eyes I have like a giant like round light part at the bottom part of the eye that's just how I like to make them. I think it makes it look nice. And I don't, I don't know why, like, when I was filming- try, Recording this, I was having such a hard time trying to get the lights to work well. I don't know what it is with some colors, especially with red. Like, with highlights and stuff, I can never seem to get it to look nice. Like, compared to other colors, like yellow and blue. Just doesn't look great. See if you can see here in the recording, like... It might also just be because of the purple outline, but... Like, you see how, like, the little light circle at the bottom, how it just doesn't look- You, s you see what I mean? It's hard to explain. It just doesn't- doesn't look right. But, yeah, that's basically how I do the eye- my- the eyes for my characters. Now you know. And just like with Cloud's design, once again, I am going to do a multiply later and shade in with purple. And then, off camera, I ended up- changing the tone and the hue of some of the colors of the purple. So that's the bright side of working with light purple. I hate it, but with this light purple, you it's easier, I guess, to like change the shade to make it look better, look nice and better colors. So I guess there's a couple points. Still don't like the color though, it's ugly. And finally, here we are, the moment of truth. Here she is. Here is our nighttime attendant. This is Starry Sky, obviously Cloud's nighttime counterpart. She t takes care of the children during nap time along with Moondrop. Just like Cloud, her bow is also equipped with a projector, but instead of projecting lights of like different colors and stuff like that, she basically shines like different pictures of stars, constellations, planets, and galaxies. Because I guess people like looking at stars and stuff to help them sleep. And also, as just like Cloud, the buttons on her chest are also equipped with the speaker and volume button, but, but instead of playing upbeat music like Cloud, she plays various soothing songs and lullabies to help the children sleep. And there you have it. Those are my daycare attendant OCs. Honestly, these two actually look a lot better than pr OCs that I've made in the past, but those past OT OCs I literally made when I was 13, so. So these ones are more recent, so they're, I guess, better, I guess. But yeah, that's it. I was going to draw, like, more reference sheet art for them, like, other information and stuff, but I got lazy and I really want this video to get done, so maybe in the future, maybe at some point after this video is done, maybe I'll draw like more concept art for them and stuff but other than that that's it what do you think of my ocs if you like them if you like this video please give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and i hope you all have a nice day Bye bye